a park ranger described this area as a medicine bowl. Well, it's been two weeks now living in the Joshua Tree National Park, a world away from big cities that are just a few hours away, like Phoenix, Los Angeles, even Mexico. And what a treat. I highly recommend Joshua Tree National Park for your van life experience or just a, a vacation. Starting the day in Joshua Tree National Park, greeted by these incredible stones that tower over everything, is humbling. It's surreal. It's it's medicine. Love it here. I'd like to share with you a bit about the, you know, where we are and what there is to do, some tips for staying warm, and some safety tips as well. Joshua Tree National Park is in the Sonoran Desert. The Colorado Desert as well as the Mojave Desert are here. There's a difference of 3,000 feet, but you don't feel like you're ever climbing really high uh, to get through the park. It's very, very gentle. What is there to do in Joshua Tree? So Joshua Tree National Park is filled with great things to do. You could climb, you could walk, you could hike, you could keep it simple and flat, you could go up and down the rocks, whatever you like. There's also golfing, there's a pool at the, the Senior Center, which I think you'll want to check out to see if that's accessible to the public, and there are massage therapists. Something to think about <laughs> with Joshua Tree, which I was not prepared for, is that with Joshua Tree, there is not a downtown. And the interesting shops, like the crystal shops or the health food stores or the really colorful homes, are not obvious. Uh, so you might want to find out ahead of time where those are so that you can just plot your journey on your map and get to them. It's really, it's a world away. It's hard to imagine that you're just a few hours from major cities. You know, and this landscape, this remarkable landscape that's utterly silent at night. Uh, it is a dark night city, dark sky city, which means it's fantastic for stargazing. If you enjoy uh, observatories, telescopes, binoculars, you know, you, and seeing the stars and the moon, maybe nebulae, then this is a great spot for you. The stargazing that I chose to do was Addicted to Wonder. Well, has wonder in it, of course, and just hats off. What a wonderful experience. Thank you, Tutu. Uh, there was a paradigm shift in there. I highly recommend Addicted to Wonder as a treat. It was my birthday, so I treated myself. There's also Sky's the Limit Observatory. If you get here when there's a new moon, if you time it so there's going to be a new moon, then Sky's the Limit Observatory for free will uh, show you the heavens. So highly recommend that. And then of course there's climbing and these amazing rocks. You'll see a lot of rock climbers out here. And there's just sitting and gazing, taking leisurely walks, sunbathing. Uh, right now it's in the low 40s and look at this, it's fantastic. The nighttime, uh, it's been in about the 30s, this is December. And I've been just fine. The inside of the van, you know, eventually the insulation, you know, it's just a, insulation just buys us time, right? It doesn't actually prevent the inside of the vehicle from ever getting cold or hot. It just buys you time. And uh, what I have found is that, it, you know, it gets down into the 40s at night in the van and using the electric blanket, the DC powered electric blanket has been just fine, along with a hoodie and Thank you, Lady Bug Out, for that suggestion. That is something I did years ago, and uh, you reminded me to start doing that again. And then also the wearing gloves at night. I just found those really helpful. I have stayed at three different campgrounds, including Jumbo Rocks. You can see the Pegasus right down below. And 
as well as the BLM land and the Walmart parking lot in Yucca Valley. The BLM land I had stayed in was on the north side. I'd love someday to get to the south side BLM land. They all have been very safe, very comfortable. The difference though is huge between the north BLM land and being inside the park. I cannot stress that enough. Uh, there's a shooting range near the north BLM land that is goes on pretty much all day. Uh, and it's very sandy, so if you're at all nervous about your vehicle getting you know, caught in the sand, you might not want to go out there, but I saw all kinds of vehicles. Minivans, trailers, you know, all of it, the whole gamut. Everybody seemed just fine. The Walmart felt perfectly safe. In fact, there was a singing Santa parked in his car that he had all decked out inside. I would have loved to have done a tour, but it was already pretty dark, pretty cold. I was pretty tired, <laughs> so I skipped that one. But um, he serenaded the entire parking lot for a few hours. Uh, then also the campgrounds. Now the campgrounds in Joshua Tree National Park are, I believe there are nine of them, eight or nine, and they are each different. Some emphasize the rocks more than the Joshua trees, and some emphasize the Joshua trees more than the rocks, and some have a bit of both. The, they're all beautiful. Uh, this is Jumbo Rocks, and if you're here during the week, it's much easier to just drop in, you know, use, res use recreation.gov uh, to make your reservations. On the weekends, people tend to book ahead many months ahead of time, uh, but maybe you could do that too. A safety tip for you. If you don't want steep drives and you want to avoid roads that are known for traffic accidents, then there are two things to be aware of. The Moronga Pass, which goes from Yucca Valley down to Desert Hot Springs, is harrowing. Even a lot of locals avoid it. And it comes on all of a sudden. You go, when you're coming through Yucca Valley from Joshua Tree, and Yucca Valley is sort of the mecca for all your shopping, uh, you know, big box stores and Walmart for sleeping. But if you go beyond Yucca Valley, you're gonna encounter the Moronga Pass. Now the Moronga Pass is really steep. Not for the faint of heart. Coming up is really steep too. And there are, there are many tales of people of accidents uh, for various reasons, coming up and going down. So something to consider is an alternate route that's much more enjoyable anyway. Just give yourself the time for it. And it is, you. what you can do is go through the park, go from the north to the south or the south to the north. It's about a two and a half hour drive and you'll want to stop at all kinds of places like the Chola Gardens and the Cactus Spring and, and lots of other destinations and make your way to the other entrance. That's, that's the way to go, in my opinion. Now, if you are coming from the north and going through the park to the south, then you could then go um, head over to Desert Hot Springs and soak at the Desert Hot Springs Motel and Spa, which has nine pools, big pools in the, their hotel courtyard that are all hot springs. So, and it's very affordable. So I highly recommend that. And then you could, um, if you're brave, have plenty of gas, don't mind getting stuck behind a trailer or a truck that's going 10 miles an hour up that steep grade, uh, then by all means, come back up the Moronga Pass. It'll only take you about a half an hour uh, to get back up to Yucca Valley or Joshua Tree. But otherwise, just come back up through the gorgeous, gorgeous park or sleep at the BLM land on the south entrance. Okay, so those are some tips there. Another safety tip is dark. So this is a dark sky city. Thank goodness. We love that. However, it can make driving a bit perilous, especially on 62, uh, which runs uh, straight, very, very straight uh, through Joshua Tree and Yucca Valley and 29 Palms, and it just keeps going. There are no lights, right? So sunset is really dark, and even if there's a full moon, it's dark, especially if there's not a full moon, it's pitch black only thing you see are those headlights and those headlights 
are coming at 65, 70, 75 miles an hour, even at night. So it makes it hard to find the road that you need to turn off on for your campground or for the BLM land. So I highly recommend uh, timing when you're gonna be driving on that route, 62. I don't, I don't drive it um, within about 15 minutes of sunset. It's just too dark. And the roads here are very, very sandy. They blend in to their surroundings. So even, so even though there's a road, your GPS is gonna say, oh, turn off here to get to this street, like Cascade Road or Indian Cove Road, it's, it's not gonna be easy to see that road. Uh, another reason to just drive during the light here. All right, that's that, those are the only safety tips that I have for you. If you want to receive the mail in Joshua Tree, I have found the UPS store to be very helpful in Yucca Valley. So what you do is you order something, whether it's from Amazon or some, some other store and or somebody's gonna mail you something, put that UPS store location on the address with their store number and your phone number. They told me that they will not receive any packages that don't have the store number and that don't have your phone number on the package. Very important. And then they'll do a hold fee, you know, a $5 hold fee if it's a small, easily managed uh, package or a $10 hold fee if it's more than that. They're very, I found them to be very helpful at the Yucca Valley UPS store. Thank you, UPS in Yucca Valley. You know, there's something about rocks, big rocks like this, that hold a stillness um, that I find very healing. A park ranger described this area as a medicine bowl. It used to be filled with water, which evaporated. And, you know, these rocks before the water um, and during the water, you know, they, they came up from the molten, molten, molten depths. And, uh, and they were in the water and the water shaped them. And then they were out in the open air and the open air has shaped them over a very long time. They contain so much history and so much stillness. It will be hard to leave them. It's called Joshua Tree National Park after the yucca cactus that looks like a tree. And it's quite beautiful. Black Rock Campground is a wonderful place to stay if you want to be immersed in the Joshua Trees. And they have a lovely, lovely energy as well. I hope that with these tips and with sharing some of my experiences with you, you feel inspired to come to visit Joshua Tree National Park in California. It's time to say goodbye to Joshua Tree for now. I will be coming back. And what's next? is Yuma. Now Yuma is a destination for people who live out of their vehicles, any kind of vehicle, for any reason. And I'm really looking forward to seeing Yuma and sharing, sharing that with you as well. Thank you to the National Park Service for giving us all access to such beauty and caretaking it so lovingly. Follow your heart and enjoy your journey.